Jack of all trades, master of none. This saying is often used in a negative light, but should it be? Probably not, but to understand why that is, let's take a look at the full version of that quote. Jack of all trades, master of none, but oftentimes better than a master of one. That was the full version of the quote that we are all so familiar with, but why would it be better to be a jack of all trades than a master at something? There are a couple of reasons for this, but the biggest one is time. Intuitively, it seems like it would be way better to be a master at one thing than to just be okay at a bunch of things. But that situation starts to get flipped when you take into account just how much time you have to put into truly mastering something. In a previous video, link in the description, I covered what it actually takes to become a master. And it turns out it's quite a lot more than you might guess. The basic metric for whether or not someone has mastered something is the 10,000 hour rule. Basically, after 10,000 hours of a consistent, difficult practice, you can be considered a master at something. I've also heard that if you want to become a master at something, you need to like and subscribe. Now, 10,000 hours of practice to become a master at something and become known as one of the best in the world at it doesn't seem like that bad of a trade-off until you actually take a look at, at what you're giving up with those 10,000 hours. In economics, we have a principle known as opportunity cost. This is basically whatever you're giving up in order to get something else. And what you're giving up in order to become a master is everything else that you could have learned. Again, in that video, I discussed the idea of using reading to increase your proficiency level at a specific scale or in a specific area. And one of the main conclusions is that three books read in a specific area puts you in the top 1% of knowledge for that field. Taking a very conservative estimate of 100 hours to read three books, in that 10,000 hours, you could read three books on a hundred different topics. This means that you would know more than 99% of the population in a hundred different fields. Think about how useful that would be. Knowing so much about so many different fields would help you draw on that material to solve whatever problem comes before you. This brings us to the next reason why it's better to be a jack of all traits than a master of one specific thing. Specialization versus adaptability. The term jack of all trades necessitates that you know a bunch about a ton of different fields or a ton of different trades. On the other hand, the term master of one implies that that is your specialty. That is all that you really know how to do. Now think about your day to day life. How often do you spend an entire day doing one thing only? Oftentimes you'll be faced with multiple different challenges that you need to adapt to. And if you know a bunch about several different fields, it's a lot easier for you to see those changes coming and figure out how to overcome them. Whereas if you only focus on one specific thing, whenever you see a challenge that's outside of that field, it's going to be a real struggle for you. Chances are that you're going to face a ton of different challenges from several different areas. And if you're a jack of all trades, you're already well equipped to adapt to that situation. Whereas if you're a master of one that specializes in a specific area, you might not be well equipped to handle those challenges. Now, despite all of this, there might still be some of you who aren't sold on the idea of being a jack of all trades yet. And I don't blame you. There's something enticing about mastery and being one of the best in the world at a specific skill or knowing a ton about a specific area. But there's another huge problem with becoming a master of one. How often do you truly need a master? The answer is not very often. The vast majority of day-to-day -day problems can be solved by someone who is merely proficient in that field. Think of taking care of problems around the house. Say you want to install some new cabinets. You don't really need a master carpenter for that. Your buddy down the street who does his own home improvement will be plenty good enough to take care of that issue. This applies to almost everything that you do in your daily life. Say you want to learn how to cook. Most of what you want to learn how to cook can be taught to you by someone who does cooking in their spare time. You don't need a master chef to come and teach you how to bake a chicken breast. The truth is that for almost every situation you're going to face in your life, you don't need a master to help you solve it. 
You simply need someone who knows a little bit about it. So you tell me, who's going to be more useful? The person who knows a decent amount about a bunch of different fields or the master who you can only call on for those niche needs in that one specific field. I don't know about you, but I have my money on the jack of all trades. This isn't to say that masters aren't necessary. When those niche situations come up and you need a master, you really, really need a master. You need someone who knows what they're doing. But for most of us, the cost of becoming a master is just far too high. It makes more sense for us to become a jack of all trades. Now, there are several other benefits to becoming a jack of all trades, such as being able to discover what you like and what you're good at, drawing connections between all the things that you know, and being a better learner overall. But those deserve their own video. So, which one are you? A jack of all trades or a master of one? Let me know down in the comments. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.